Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today we're going to talk insects, and I'm joined by Amanda Craven, agronomist from Pride Seeds. Amanda, how's it going? I'm good, Vern. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, one of the things we've heard a lot about this year, corn rootworm. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about resistance, how do we manage it, rotation. What have you seen this year? What's happening in the fields as I say you've been walking? It's a great question, Vern. So what we're seeing this year in our corn on corn fields where we have above ground protection only, we are seeing a lot of goose necking. We saw some root pruning earlier on and now we're seeing rather large numbers of adult corn rootworms um, in some situations, both Northern and Southern. Right. What about, um, I guess, the situation with, you know, corn on corn versus well rotated land um, and ro well ro rotated crops? Distinct difference there? Yeah, I would say today in Ontario, we are still for the most part lucky that our above and below ground traits are holding up. Mm -hmm. um, that is this year, that is today. And so the big conversation is around what, we, what can we do to try to mitigate losing those? Um, what do we need to do as producers uh, so that we can keep using this technology to our own benefit? Yeah, and one of the things obviously we talked about corn on corn, and you've got in this plot here, um, uh, some real evidence of what happens when we're mm -hmm. doing corn on corn. Take us through this plot, Amanda. What do we see? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what we're seeing here today is a rather high um, population of corn rootworm adults. We saw a lot of uh, larva feeding earlier on. There's a lot of goosenecking in here, a lot of root pruning, unfortunately. We have um, a G2, which is above ground only, and G8, which is above and below, side by side. And the evidence or the difference is clear as day. Yeah. We have full rows that are goosenecked versus full rows that are standing tall which is great, mm -hmm. but it also shows the importance of why we need to preserve this technology. Exactly, and um, talk about yield impact here. In, in this situation where you have such you know, high levels of damage, what type of impact are we looking at? Yeah, surely where we have plants completely gooseneck over and, and, and not even throwing a viable cob, the yield loss there is pretty big. We can expect nothing from that plant. Um, Tracy Bowdy and Jocelyn Smith have done some great work to try to quantify what uh, root pruning will do to a, to a crop. So they've found that um, when even a, something as small as one node is lost, you can expect 15 to 18% of yield loss mm. in that plant. So let's talk about the future here and our, our plans going forward. Anything we can do this fall to sort of to mitigate this situation? Should we be out there scouting and making sure we know where hot spots maybe are in the field or where corn rootworm has set down some roots? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we still have some important information we can gather out of this year. There are still adults flying around doing their thing. Although what's lost is lost at this point, it is important to be able to walk into the field and try to understand what you're going, what's going on today so that we can track that as through the next few seasons and see are we progressing, are, is the technology holding where we'd like to see it um, for this year with the damage is done. However, we can still learn some things for next year. Yeah, so talk about next year. I know Tracy Bowdy and Jocelyn have been doing a lot of work uh, on the trapping network. Tell me about what, what you're telling your clients and what, what they're telling us overall. Yeah, in general, it's really important to know what's going on in the field. So nothing replaces getting out there and taking a look at the crop. Um, if you have corn on corn where you've planted the appropriate variety that has above and below ground protection and you're seeing um, adults out there or you're seeing root pruning, that's a big problem. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of thing that people need to know about because um, that's very concerning for the whole industry seeing as we don't have a lot of tools sitting in the toolbox yeah. uh, to back us up. Yeah. So should we be counting beetles in this next year? Talk a little bit about that trapping approach. Yeah, so absolutely. About end of July, get some sticky traps out there. It's important to maybe, you know, once a week go out there, do a count, see what you're dealing with and report it. Um, it's good to try to learn how to identify your southern versus northern. Southern being your yellow and black stripe and your northern being more of that bright green beetle. Awesome. Well, hey Amanda, um, great to catch up with you. Great to have you on the Corn School. Thanks for the insight and as I say, we'll keep our eyes out for Corn Rootworth. Sounds great, friend. Thanks for coming by.